If you guys can enjoy your week. It's been some time since I did a video. Um, this morning we'll be doing a review. Something you don't see very often. I happen to own two of these. I just got this a uh, little after Black Friday. Um, yeah, definitely something you'll see every day. Very hard to come by. It is a Maruchin Type 14 Nambu. 8mm version in the flat finish. So before I get started again, like as I mentioned earlier, these Nambus are extremely hard to come by. So if you ever see one on eBay, or if you happen to see one used for a good price, definitely grab it. It's the quintessential piece to uh, an Imperial Japanese reenactor, as much as the sword is. And get them because they're really hard to get. You know, they really are difficult to find. And that's just the airsoft ones. I can only imagine the real ones. So I don't know why they, they don't re, they don't restock them. Uh, my other one I was lucky to have gotten off uh, eHobby Asia. And now they're all out of all variants. There's like four different variants of the Nambu that were on the website. I grabbed two of them. I had a late war one which I sold to another friend. He has an Imperial Japanese impression, so he has my late war one, which I did a video of sometime early summer, and I replaced it now. I had to sell it to pay off bills. Unfortunately, curse you bills. I replaced it with this one. So, again, just emphasizing that you should grab a Nambu, Nambu, if you ever see one for a good price. So they should be in the vicinity of two to three hundred dollars, depending where you get it from and whatnot. How much shipping is? We go from there. So this is the box. This one's well over 10 years old, but it's in extremely good condition. I guess this is again the 8mm version, heavyweight. It comes with some targets and a manual in Japanese, which I cannot read. But let me show you something interesting about this manual. It gives you a breakdown of the weapon. Going back to what I said earlier, the gun not only is hard to find, but the magazines are just as impossible to find. So if you even find the magazine too, definitely grab it. If I happen to find an 8mm magazine for this, I'm definitely going to grab it. So it gives you a nice, like, not only a breakdown of the weapon, but it shows you how to use it. And then what the coolest thing I think, gives you an there's an illustration of an Imperial Japanese army officer or... Yeah, I think it's an Imperial Japanese Army officer, it's not Navy, using it. So it's not just some random instruction manual they've slapped together. I mean, they showed you everything. The operation of the weapon and whatnot. Okay. Inside, contents. So we received a pistol, which is nicely in there. Sample pack of 8mm BBs and a little Allen wrench, which I don't know what it's there for, but okay. Probably to adjust the hop up or take apart the weapon. We put this down. I see the template. So going into the weapon, it's comprised mostly of polymer and the metal. The metal parts, uh, if I miss something or I say something wrong, just correct me, okay? The outer barrel is metal, your inner barrel is metal, and look how massive that thing is. It's a little hand cannon compared to six millimeters. Uh, front sight is metal, trigger guard is metal. You can see it's the early war one, circular trigger guard. Trigger is metal. Safety is metal, bounce off safe. Toggle is metal, so just like the Luger, you pull that back, weapon fires. Whoops, you don't want to swing it in the wrong direction because you will break it and there are no replacement parts for the Nambu. So when this thing breaks, it's gonna break and you're not gonna get any replacement parts. So 
take good care of these things. You own one. Mag releases metal. The, the magazine is metal. There's your fill valve down here. This is the most interesting magazine I've seen. The most, well, well decorated, I will say. It's half the weight of the gun. The gun weighs two pounds, I believe. It's even dated when they made the mag. When Maru Shin made the mag, January of 2008. So you can tell this gun's well over 10 years old. Of course, the screws that hold everything, the Rosewood grip, grips here. These are metal. The grips are made of wood. It smells like real wood. So my, my assumption is that it's real wood. Metal lanyard loop. The top part of the gun right here. I don't know what this is called, forgive me. It's made of metal and it's all nicely engraved. Numbered. Got some kanji over here. I'm half Japanese myself and I don't even know what any of this says. So the chamber. It's all plastic. This yeah, this part over here is plastic. Uh, the thumb rest over here is plastic. And that's really the only plastic parts I can think of. Okay. Let me emphasize that you do not, do not, do not in any circumstance use green gas or propane on this gun. These Japanese pistols, make sure that you use duster gas. You can find that at Walmart or, um, or CVS. They should have it. Just like to clean computers and whatnot. Mix that with some silicone oil and you should be able to use this, especially with these 8mm guns. These things shoot hard. I can't even use it in my local field. Uh, one of my local fields, I don't know about the other local field, but it's probably going to be banned. Um, because if you use green gas, you will completely destroy the gun. And again, like I said earlier, there are no extra parts or replacement parts. There's no aftermarket for this gun, so you break this thing, you're screwed, basically. So it's a really nicely well-weighted pistol. The magazine is like half the weight of the gun. It's very easy to aim. I don't know if I can, the camera can pick up the sights. Just stand out of the way. It's very, very well nicely detailed, very well weighted. Again, this is the early war, early war model with the smaller trigger guard. The lanyard loop on the later ones moved, they moved it from back here to over here and they enlarged it right here at this point. So, if I can, I got a bunch of these old arms magazines that someone gave me. So you guys know I'm an old school airsofter, so when I see this kind of stuff, it excites me. I just so happen to be reading this one. I came across A breakdown of the weapon so if you have one of these old arms magazines you never know you might have a little article right here on a breakdown of your weapon or something like that so I found this to be kind of neat so as you can see on the late war one trigger guards enlarged line your loops move down here so that way it's easier to pull out of the holster found this to be pretty neat so this one is Jan no August of 2008 but yeah, that pretty much sums up the review on the Maru Shin Nambu. I'll try to get a chrono video of this. I don't know if we have a chrono that can read uh, guns that fire 8mm BBs. This is my first 8mm gun. So that, that'll be interesting. Kind of neat. It's an 8mm gun, and the real one fires 8mm uh, Nambu as well. So that's kind of neat. I paid 200 for mine off the Hop Up app. I was so fortunate. This is by far the cheapest one I got. The others I paid like $280 for. I paid $280 for my late war and $280 for my early my other early war. And I sold my late war for $220 to my friend Rayson, who has an Imperial Japanese officer impression. Very nice. So that pretty much sums up the review of the Maru Shin. Maru Shin 
Nambu Type 14, 8mm Early War in the flat finish. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll make more videos in the future. Stay tuned, as always.